All right, CNT 120, Chapter 2. We're now in the section where we talk about the different types of cabling we would have in our, you know, commercial school building kind of thing. So patch cables, horizontal cable, backbone cabling. All right, let's take a look at patch cables. Most of us are very familiar with patch cables because that's how we connect even, you know, our laptop to our homeowner router that we have, our PlayStation to a homeowner router that we have, you know, those kinds of things. So these are typically a couple feet long cable, a couple foot long cable um, that's really designed to connect your PC to an outlet or a work area um, or in a closet patch panel to a switch port. That's typically what they're used for. So in our commercial environment, we have the workstation, a couple foot cable plugged into a data outlet on the wall. The other end, we would have the patch cable in the closet going from the patch panel down to a switch. Uh, or my example here, uh, patch cable going from the computer to the wall outlet in my office. And then on the other end in the data closet, patch cable going from the patch panel down to a, a switch, a network switch. They come in a variety of lengths, variety of colors. Um, but they all typically have this modulate pin connector here that we typically call an RJ45. Um, and some of them even do have little boots and things on to keep the, the clips from getting hung up. Um, even some stress relief here so the uh, cable does not get worn out so quickly. They do do have a color code pinout. Um, according to the standard, there's an A and a B color code. That's something we'll focus on a little bit later. But there is a color code to it. Patch cables are all tip typically made out of your unshielded twisted pair cabling. Unshielded twisted pair cabling. And as a patch cable, the patch cable going from the outlet, you know, wall outlet to my computer, this needs to be flexible. It needs to be able to move around a lot. So if I cut it open and look at it, the actual twisted pair cabling, that wire inside is made up of many smaller wires. So this is a stranded conductor. That cut conductor inside is made up of uh, very small wires, almost reminds you of like hair. A bunch of small wires twisted together to make a conductor. That allows the cable to be very flexible but still carry a signal. The downside is this does add resistance, so it's going to weaken the signal. That's why we keep our patch cables usually as short as we need them. Long patch cables usually add extra signal loss, what they call attenuation. It adds extra signal loss. Um, so sometimes a really long patch cable can cause a network connection to uh, be faulty, not work as well as we want it to. Um, so this stranded conductor is typically used for our patch cables for flexibility, but I do need to watch my distances there. Next type of cabling I have in my building is my horizontal cabling. My horizontal cabling, this is the cable that's going to go from the work area out where the user is and back to the closet to my patch panel. My twisted pair cabling, my unshooted twisted pair cabling here, has a ma maximal allowable distance um, for of 100 meters. So... Um, after 100 meters, the signal starts getting too weak and you start losing data integrity. So typically, the horizontal cabling is limited to 90 meters. And that gives us that 10 meters that we can use for patch cables on each end. So if you look at my sample from before, here's the horizontal cabling. If I zoom in and look, I have a note here that 90 meters max. And that gives me basically 5 meters here and 5 meters here for patch cables. All that adds up to be my 100 meter max distance for unshielded twisted pair cabling. So my horizontal cabling is usually 90 meters. Um, I'm going to back up a little bit. This In this diagram, the horizontal cabling is, you know, going from the outlet up through the wall, above the ceiling, um, you know, down the hall and into the closet. This diagram here, a horizontal cable is going from the outlet up the wall, you know, across the ceiling, down the hall, and down into my data closet. Here's a slightly better example as you take a look. Um, if I look at an outlet here, it goes up through the wall above the ceiling, usually supported in cable trays, you know, down the hall, if you will, and into the data closet and down into the patch panel. That's what we typically see or like what we typically have. Above the ceiling are usually trays to support the cabling. 
Uh, the cabling is usually bundled and organized, um, and, and it's, it's supporting these trays above the ceiling, so it's not going to be tampered with, messed with, or moved around. And that's your 90 meters max for the horizontal cabling. The horizontal cabling um, is typically terminated into the patch, can patch panel. Here's the back. And then here's the front of the patch panel, the ports. And I use my patch cables here to connect that into my switch ports. That's typically how our horizontal cabling is dealt with. Um, again, horizontal cabling coming down the hall into the closet, into the patch panel. Horizontal cabling comes down the, you know, above the ceiling, down the hall, and into the closet and terminated the back of the patch panel. And this is the kind of stuff you, f you find above the ceiling when you look for it. As the cabling is being routed, again, it's supporting these trays, organized, bundled. Um, that way, it is, it, is, um, uh, it is protected. Again, here's some more you know, horizontal cabling down the hall and into your closet. Horizontal cabling, um, the other end, you know, the, the closet end has, is terminated the patch panel. The other end is terminated into these outlets. That's the other end of the cabling, terminated to the outlets here, other end of the horizontal cabling. So the horizontal cabling here, going from the work outlet, you know, up, up through the wall, above the ceiling, in those trays, down the hall, down the wall, into patch panel in the equipment closet. That is my horizontal cabling. Well, my horizontal cabling, again, is typically unshielded twisted pair, this guy right here. But the difference with my horizontal cabling is this is typically a solid conductor. If I cut it open and look, that is one copper wire for that conductor. The solid conductor wire actually has less resistance. So the signal can go further before it weakens. But the downside of this, and I mean, that's a good thing because my signal is going to go from the outlet the whole way down the hall and in the closet into the patch panel. Nice strong signal. The downside is with that single copper conductor, um, if you've ever taken a paper clip and bent it back and forth a couple times, you know it snaps pretty quickly. The same thing if you have a coat hanger, you bend it a couple times, it usually snaps. Well, the same thing can happen with this copper conductor as well. I start bending that a lot, it can break. Well, that's why as we look back here at some of these examples, once I install that cabling, I kind of bundle it up and leave it there. I don't mess with it. I don't move it around. It's installed in the walls, above the ceiling in these trays, and, and, and down into the closet. Once it's installed, it stays there. So that solid copper conductor gives us better signal, better signal transfer, but it is something I need to be aware of that if I start moving this around a whole lot, I could cause that to break over time. That's my horizontal cabling. Last bit of cabling I'm going to run into is backbone cabling. Well, backbone cabling is typically the cabling that's going to go between my closets or between my switches. This is typically going to be fiber optic for bandwidth or distance. Bandwidth or distance. Well, in a um, you know environment like oh, we'll pick on like a college campus or something where I'm connecting buildings together, I'm typically going to use fiber between those buildings for the distance purposes. But I also might use it for bandwidth. If I look at a building between my two closets, it's still typically going to be fiber optic mainly for bandwidth. Even this this here that's showing the orange wiring, that is my fiber optic cabling connecting this switch to this one, this switch to this one. Again, it's typically going to be for bandwidth. Here, in this case, it's used, you're shown green wires, but connecting my closets together is my backbone cabling. In my example here, I'm showing you a switch to switch. That is a fiber optic backbone cable right there connecting those two. And they look like this. This is literally fiber optic cables plugged into a switch. Um, they get bundled up into your rack. Um, and as they go from closet to closet, there's literally a hole drilled through the floor. Um, metal conduit, metal sleeve is put into that hole. The cabling runs through. Here's some fiber optic cabling and so forth here going through. And then that red clay is what they call fire stop. Um, if you were to have a fire in this room, if you don't have fire stop there, this almost acts like a wick to bring fire into another room. That fire stop there almost reminds you of like a red clay is designed to stop that from happening, stop the fire from spreading from room to room. So it's called fire stop. So there's my backbone cabling going between my closets. So going back to my example here, horizontal cabling from patch panel 
out to outlets. That's typically solid cabling, limited to 90 meters. We have patch cables on each end. I have a patch cable in the closet here going from the patch panel to the switch. And I have a patch cable from the outlet here going out to my user computer. Those patch cables are typically stranded for flexibility. And they're usually a few, a handful of feet up to a few meters. Um, as you see, it says about five meters here, about five meters here. Well, five meters is about 15 feet. That's a pretty good size cable. But I usually keep it to what I need it. I don't add extra length there. Um, so there's my horizontal. Here's my patch cable, patch cable. And then here's my backbone connecting my closets together, which again is typically fiber optic for bandwidth, but it can also be for distance. When we come back in the next section, we'll start talking cable management.